Today is part three of our custom shower build. We'll be finishing up the shower and then give you a look at the completed master bathroom. This is a complete shower build from scratch. We poured the base and then we put the membrane on the walls. And then we finished up the base by doing a dry pack. And then we completed the membrane on the base and laid the tiles. We also installed the drain and today we'll be finishing up the rest of the tiles and grouting. Here I am mixing up the first batch of mortar and I'm getting ready to install the tile on the first wall. We'll be using a rather large and plain white porcelain tile and this will serve to break up the more textured tile that we'll be using on the other two walls. I'm starting out by putting on a wet coat just trying to cover the wall with the mortar and then I'll come back in with the trowel, the notch trowel and put in the lines. I'm planning to do this in small batches, do two or three feet of height at a time so I'm taking my mortar up to that level and starting to install the tile. I'm putting in the first piece here. This is really critical. I've got the level out and I'm trying to make sure that it's perfectly level along the bottom so that as I go up the wall I won't have to worry about it anymore. I'll be using some factory made spacers to keep the spacing right as I go up. I had to make some fine adjustments to get this first row of tile just right. I'm using some wedge shaped shims to do that and that's working out good. Once I get this all perfect it should go quickly as I go up from here. With the hard part done, this is going really fast. I'm able to use two tiles uncut and only cut one on each side and then just alternate that side that the cut one is on. The size of the cut tile stays the same all the way up so I can just cut several of those to that same width and then this is just like stacking bricks. Well, I'm almost done already. I'm only going to go up to within about a foot of the top and I'll leave that last foot or so open because we're going to be changing tile to a more colorful and interesting pattern along the top. I was able to do this entire wall in one session. I was at first concerned that the upper tiles would cause the lower tiles to shift as it's all trying to kind of sag before the mortar sets, but that wasn't a problem here. I think it helped that the tiles were larger and I used plenty of these pre-made shims and it wasn't an issue. I was able to do it all in one time. I'm moving on to one of the side walls here and we will be using a really nice tile that we got at a surplus and discontinued building supply store. It's the same width but about half of the height as the larger white tiles that I just finished up putting on the wall. These tiles also have a really nice wavy texture built in and a lovely pearl tone which we really enjoy. I think it's going to be really pretty. These tiles are really nice and we love that pearl hue but they seem to have just a bit of a pink undertone and so it made it difficult to find a white tile that would go well with it on that back wall. We ended up going with the closest tone we could find and we'll see how that works out once we get the grout and everything. I'm hoping it'll all blend in better. This is a fun process and the time lapse makes it look like it's going really fast but it's actually pretty slow. <laughs> I'm having to work pretty fast here to keep the mortar from drying too quickly and that's why I'm only doing those a rise of two or three feet at a time because I'm working slow enough that the mortar will start to dry before I get there. Here's a look at our tile cutting setup. I'm just using my old workbench that I moved over closer to the house and we have a very old tile saw that was given to us years ago. It still works great. We had to replace the blade with the new diamond blade. But it works fantastic. I, most of my cuts are freehand. I will draw a line across with some kind of a marker, maybe on the back side, and then just freehand it through. I never use the fence. Just like on the back wall, with these side walls, I only have to cut one piece for each row, which is really nice. So I can just go outside, cut up a whole bunch of those pieces, all exactly the same width, and then come back in, and on each row, use two fresh uncut tiles and one cut. And so it goes really quickly, relatively speaking. It takes taking me a long time, um, but it does minimize the amount of cutting I have to do. And here's a look at the tile that we'll be using across the top. I really love this color. It has kind of a crackle appearance on the finish. And it has these lovely blue tones in this shell shape. And it reminds me of waves of the ocean. So it's really pretty. I love looking at it. And we'll be putting this all along the top. Unfortunately, there's no way I can keep the round contour of the top and the bottom of these shells, so I have to cut it off straight, top and bottom. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting the tile down to the correct width, and then I'm cutting several of those and laying them all out, getting ready to put them all along the top, all the way around the shower stall. 
Here I am doing my layout. I've got the top and bottom cut, but they don't naturally mesh together. I have to remove some pieces from an extra square and fit those in so that it all makes a continuous pattern. Now that that's done, I know exactly what height I'm dealing with, and so I'm able to cut the white tile that'll go right up next to it underneath to the right height as well, so that it'll all fit in the space that I have left. Well, that was a lot of cutting and prep work, but I think I now have everything ready to finish up these two walls here. I now have my mortar base on, I'm putting the grooves in, and getting ready to put on the one last layer of white tile, and then I'll finally be putting on that decorative tile up top. That's the stuff that makes me nervous. I kind of had to just pick it up and use both hands to kind of slap it on the wall and get it stuck on there and then start piecing it in. This was really tricky and definitely took me a good bit of time. I struggled with this. I needed a lot of little spacers to get it to stay where I wanted it. It wants to sag and droop. Once that was roughly in place, I decided to go ahead and move on to the other wall. So I applied the mortar, put the grooves in, and got ready to start applying the tile. I have quite a few of the white tiles that I'll put on first, and then I can move on to the blue shell tile. I'm almost done with the full-sized tile, and the next layer will be a fairly thin layer, thinner than I really wanted to do. It's like a half-inch thick layer that'll go on to fill in that space between the decorative tile up top. It ended up looking pretty nice, so I was relieved, but I was worried about it. And I'm finally ready to put up the last of this decorative tile. As you can see, it's starting to get dark outside. This is taking longer than I expected. And these upper tiles are moving a lot. I had April come in and help me. She's putting in shims, and we're both working together trying to get these tiles in the right place before it dries. Here I'm outside, kind of finishing up, cleaning up for the day in the dark. And back inside, trying to get the spacing right on these tiles. Uh, they want to settle, and so it's really difficult to get them in just the right spot. Red is trying to finish up the tile in the shower. He's bringing over supplies. He has his tile cutter set up over there. I'm getting set up today to work on the third and final wall of the shower stall. It's kind of a cold day. I'm hoping the weather holds. Well, the weather is definitely getting nastier. It's cold and it's starting to rain, but I'd really like to get the tile applied to the wall today and get this step completed. So I'm gonna push through. I've got all the tile prepped. I've made and cut several of the ones to the correct width and I'm ready to mix up the mortar and get started. I started by meticulously getting that base row level and then just started going on up. On the previous wall that I did, I was worried that it would get out of level going up especially since there are so many of these long, thin bricks, but it didn't. It stayed very level all the way up. I checked it a few times, and so I have a lot of confidence that it'll work going up here, so it's, that's all going well. I do check it occasionally with the level, and I've worked my way here up almost to the hard part, which is where I need to make some cutouts for the faucet handles. Luckily, one of the faucet handles landed on a seam, and so that one was relatively easy to do. I was able to make some easy side cuts and kind of build that contour half moon shape on each piece. The harder one was the second handle. I tried to drill through, but the piece ended up cracking at the last minute, but I decided to go ahead and use the piece. I didn't feel like I could do any better on a second try. This tile is fairly brittle, and I, I felt like I could put them together with a little bit of mortar and the seam would be almost invisible. So that's the, what I did. The seam is slightly visible, but we don't mind. That's the really nice thing about doing work for yourself, is you only have to please yourself, and that's really nice. I'm almost up to the decorative layer now, just a couple more rows. This is staying very nice and level, and I already have a good idea of how thick I'll need to make that piece that transition between this and the decorative layer up top. Well, the weather has definitely taken a turn for the worst. It is very cold and wet, and my fingers are almost numb, but I really want to push through this and get this done. Uh, fortunately, the water isn't a problem when you're doing wet cutting on tile, so I can just work through this here. All I have left is the upper row of tile, these decorative tiles here. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of work to do these. I have to cut them top and bottom, and I have to piece them all together, and then I also have to cut the ends down and end up with a section of tiles that perfectly fits in the spot that I have. 
I had to take a little break to let my hands warm up, get some feeling back in the hands, and then it was gear back up and go back outside to finish it up. I'm almost done. Just a few last final detailed cuts to get it all pieced together. I've got it all laid out here so I think it'll all work together. Now I'm kind of stacking it up carefully so I know how to install it once I get it inside. With those cuts, I needed to mix up one final batch of mortar in the rain. Had to protect that from rain while it was slaking. Once that was all done, I'm back inside and getting ready to start on this final leg here. Getting ready to put on the mortar one last time. So just getting this final section mortared and then I'll get the lines in. The first piece that I'll put on is that thin piece along the bottom, which actually worked out better than we expected. It's just, there, there it is, it's that half inch wide piece of white. And it actually ended up looking like trim, so it worked out really well. And then I've got all the little spacers that I'm putting in as I start to put in that decorative tile piece. And here you can see the part of the process where I start to space out the tiles. They want to compress and the gaps in between the individual tiles get too small. And so I'm using tons of little wedges here, trying to keep the spaces between the tiles uniform all through. It's quite a meticulous process. It was about this time that we realized something was missing. Actually, it was April who noticed it. She was recording and she's like, something is missing here. And then we realized that I hadn't put in the shower arm yet. So I'm glad she noticed. And so while things were still wet, I started prying off tiles and trying to find where the hole for the shower arm was. We had put the membrane over it, intending to cut the hole out later, and, but we didn't. And so that's why I didn't notice as I put the tile up. Fortunately, we caught it in time and it was a pretty easy fix. So we're all ready for grout. Red's out there mixing. I've mixed up a batch of grout. It's in the same color that we used for the floor and we're going to be using that on the walls as well and I'm starting to apply it here. I'm using a soft face trowel to work it into the cracks and I'm really trying to get it pressed in deeply and make sure there's no bubbles, make sure that it's filled completely as I go. This is a lot of really hard work, and in fact, I would consider it one of the most labor-intensive parts of the process. I certainly don't enjoy it as much as laying the tile. That actually seems easy compared to the grout. The grout is just a ton of work. You're, you're really working hard to get the grout pressed in, and then you have to remove it, and it is so much work. You're wiping with a rag and with a sponge, and you're trying to get the excess off without taking off too much, and especially with the tile we used, it has that wavy pattern in it. It was difficult to remove all the grout, so this was a lot of work. I was sweating here, working hard. This took a really long time. I was dreading it, and sure enough, it was as bad as I expected it to be. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go get some fresh water and cook it one more time. I'm using fresh water in a bucket to rinse off my sponge and rag with, and so I have to refresh that occasionally, come back in with fresh water. I'm going over it several times just to get off the excess, but I'm really trying to be careful not to take off too much as well. I'll need to come back in tomorrow, once this is dried some, to take off the last little bit and remove the haze. I'm getting close to being done here, and I will say that as a reward for the hard, brutal labor that this is, you do get the enjoyment of seeing the finished product because the grout really does tie in the different types of tile and ties the whole thing in together and it's looking really nice. I've done all I can do for today and I'm finally able to remove the plastic off the floor. It's been really annoying having this in here. We've, we've put it down when we started the shower and it's been about three weeks that we've been working on this thing off and on and so it's great to get it out. I'm coming back in now and removing the haze, and this is really looking nice. This is more satisfying than I expected. It's so nice to see the tile all shiny. It looks so good. I'm now putting the finishing touches on the base. I'm removing the tape from the drain, and then I'll go and do one more dehazing on the base, and that'll pretty much finish it up here. Overall, we're satisfied with how this base turned out. From certain angles, it doesn't look real great. You can see some of the seams in, in between those tile squares. From other angles, it looks better. A professional definitely could have done a better job mating this up, but it's good enough for us. 
And now I'm on to installing some bathroom accessories. We have a towel rack for beside the sink that I'm installing here. And next I'm installing this swing out mirror that April wanted close to the sink that allow you to get up close without leaning way over the sink. So this would be a nice fold out mirror here. Pretty much have the base installed here. This mirror does have a light around the rim and it's a rechargeable battery power. So you don't have the cord exposed all the time, which is really nice. You just plug it in occasionally to charge the battery and the rest of the time it's cordless. I also installed a towel rack and a couple of hooks by the shower. Now I'm ready to glue on the shower arm and finish up the faucet installation. I just need to apply some thread tape and pipe dope and screw it in, put the collar over it, and then install the shower head itself. Now moving on to the faucet, I just needed to remove the tape that I had on the faucet protrusions to keep them from getting mortar on them. Once that was removed, I did a little test fit with the collar, make sure that that was all going to fit properly. That does look good, so I'm going to remove it and apply some silicone so that I get a good seal and water can't get in behind it. So I'm just putting a good bead of silicone around the edge and then as I screw that on it'll work itself all the way around and I should get a good seal. I might mention the style of faucet that we chose for this. We wanted a two knob configuration which is very hard to find these days. The most common is by far is the one knob kind of mixer, universal mixer thing. But we wanted a two knob style so that we can precisely control the amount of volume and the amount of heat that we get because we're trying to minimize water usage since we're on solar. The last step to complete the shower was to apply the grout sealer. We really want the grout to be sealed well and so we have some sealer and I'm with a tiny little brush meticulously going over every grout line and applying this. We didn't get much video of it but I went over this four times. It took quite a good bit of time but we wanted to make sure that it was sealed really well. We need a place to hold our shampoo bottles and soap and what have you and we decided that a stick-on rack would be the best option for us. And so we found a nice convenient location on one of these big tiles and I'm about to get ready to stick it on. It uses a removable adhesive. I carefully followed the package directions and it seems to be stuck on really well. Seems to be a good sturdy rack. The shower is finally done. Here we are testing it out for the first time. I've turned on the water and we've opened up the shower head and we're seeing how it works. It's, it's looking fabulous. April has made a special shower curtain for this shower and it works perfectly. It's so nice to have this done. And coming in from the bedroom, here's a quick tour of the finished master bath. And you can see here the custom cabinet sink vanity that we did. We really like how that turned out. Nice big mirror. We love this blue sink. Just love the color and the glass. It's a really nice look. The rug and the shower curtain all go together very nice, blend in very nicely with the sink. Here you can see the location of the toilet here, right on the other side of the shower wall. And now we move on to the shower. We're going for a theme here. I don't know if it really comes through, but we start at the top with like cresting ocean waves. You got these beautiful blue oceanic colors. And then going down the side, you see the white with kind of a wavy water wavy pattern. And then at, down at the bottom, you have the pebbles on the seashore. The laundry is located on the left side as you enter the bathroom and it's conveniently located right next to the master closet. With the completion of the master bath, our home is finally done. It's been an amazing experience. We're so excited to have it completely done. We've moved in and we're really enjoying the place. We finished the home build, but we have a lot more plan. In the future, we'll be helping our son build his home and we have a lot of other projects planned for around the place. April will be working on a full feature length build video and it'll include the cost. So we'll give you an analysis of how much we spent on the home and a complete cost breakdown. In the meantime though, as we transition between projects, there will be delays in video production at times. We've spent the last couple of weeks helping some of our children move and we have some guests this winter, so we've had a lot going on. But we will still be putting out new video content as we have the opportunity. Thank you so much for watching our videos and stay tuned. We have a lot more to come.